Listener question. I want to go out and shoot in the rain, but my camera is not weatherproof. Hi and welcome to episode 116 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. I need to take away the reference on my notes to have in the camera which I didn't need for this. Before I go on I need your help, I need your questions to answer. More on this at the end but please have a think while you listen to this splendid episode. Here is the answer a bit. To take photos in the rain safely, there are a number of products and techniques that you can use to protect your camera from damage. Some cameras are weatherproof, but still need protecting where possible, whereas cameras which are not weatherproofed require further measures to make sure they are not damaged by rain. So there are three parts to this. Is your camera weatherproof or not? Smart working? And protective gear. But before I go on, here is a full question from Terry over there in New South Wales. Thank you very much for the question, Terry. Much appreciated. And I hope that you are well. Here we go. I'm going to a dog show. It's at a local country house, so the events are outside. It's mostly gun dog related competitions, so plenty of scope for action dog photos. I've got up and it looks like rain. I still want to go, but my camera isn't waterproof. Any ideas? Okay, that was a question. Now, let's look at these three areas. Now, the, <laughs> the quick answer is just don't bother. Just saying. Weatherproof or not? Well, some cameras are weatherproof, some are not. And the same applies to lenses. Check with your camera slash lens manufacturer of choice and see what limitations they put on this. You might be surprised. You might be disappointed. You might be completely underwhelmed. But we are talking here about a camera that is not weatherproof. That was a question from Terry after all. So does this matter? Yes, this does matter. If you get water in the electronics of your camera, you might kill it. So don't. Protect it like a favourite family member. Protect it as though it's your most prized possession. Protect it with your life. Okay, that's going a bit far, isn't it? Establish the weatherproofness or not of your camera. That's the first thing, and that'll give you clues about what else you need to do. Even if your camera's weatherproof, I'd do everything I could do to protect it from water anyway. Smart working. What do I mean? What am I talking about here, smart working? While you're out photographing a dog show, I'd suggest you're not going to be spending all your time taking photos. So when you're not taking photos, cover your camera. Now, I have a waterproof coat with enough spare volume that I can get my camera nicely protected within my coat. I think I've uh, bought a coat future-proofing myself for future weight loss, um... Thankfully, that hasn't happened yet, so there's still room for my camera in there. But if we get another lockdown, I think I'll be getting, needing to get a bigger coat. <laughs> OK, so that's a good start. And that's a smart start. This is smart working. Keeping your camera protected at all times, you're not taking photos. Don't stand there with your camera in its nice... Oh, actually, I'll come on to that. I'll stop myself there. Talking of taking photos, being selective with what you take photos of will also help. Now, I don't take anywhere near as many photos as I used to. And as I take less photos, I also take better photos. So you might want to think about this and take less photos, but better ones. This very one thing will reduce the exposure of your camera to rain just by taking less photos. Simple, isn't it? Next one, turn your back to the rain, if you can. Another simple free thing you can do is to move to where the rain is at the back of you, reducing direct driving rain hitting your camera. Next one, wear a peaked hat. Yep, this will also help. A hat with a peak will provide enough cover for maybe the camera body. Works a treat. Get a hat with a waterproof peak and it's even better, but one big word of caution there. If you've got a waterproof peak, the water's going to roll off it and it might roll off it into a concentrated drip. Just something to be aware of. So there's a few practical things that you can do to reduce the problems of shooting in the rain. Now, let's look at some gear. Start with this. Put the lens hood on. The lens hood that comes with your lens is one of the best bits of protective gear that you can own. And it comes with your camera. So use it. I never take a photo without my lens hood on. Never. So why would you? Now, it won't fully protect your camera. Of course it won't. But it will significantly reduce water hitting that precious front lens element, which is a complete pain as it has to be removed or you get blurry photos. That's water on the front element of your lens. And another thing about lens hoods, the lens hood is the best way to protect your front element from damage. It's providing a physical barrier. I don't use protective filters anymore. I use a lens hood and I've not had a problem in years. Touching wood there very, very intently. (laughs) I really don't want to tempt fate. Rain sleeve. Now, this is what I use. It's a plastic bag designed to cover your camera and your lens. They're great for occasional use, which is fine for me. 
So if you go into the odd dog show taking photos, you'll be fine with one of these and they cost less than a tenner and they can give you years of careful if infrequent use. Yeah, these things don't last forever. They only get so many uses and then they they start to get damaged and what have you. But that's what they're designed for and the cost reflects that. Other rain covers. There are many brands of protective rain covers out there. I've never used one for reasons I'll explain later. I just don't have the need. But you know those photographers who are sat at sporting events with the gear covered by all sorts of good stuff? That's the stuff I'm talking about. And if you're going to go out taking photos at dog shows regularly, this is what you should probably look into getting. Um, (laughs) umbrella. Now, I have a tripod mount with an adapter for an umbrella. This is rather embarrassing, but I'm going to admit to it anyway. I didn't know it was for a lighting umbrella. I really thought it was for a protect you from the rain umbrella. But guess what? With the right umbrella... (laughs) with the right umbrella and a bit of creative thinking, you can actually mount a protect you from the rain umbrella on a tripod, which provides excellent protection. Yes, I have really done this. I really have, and it worked an absolute treat. Hire a camera. Well, yeah, you could hire a camera, of course, but check the rental terms before you do and get one wet. Could be a costly thing. (laughs) Underwater housing. Well, an underwater housing will certainly keep your camera dry, but you might want to do this only somewhere where no one knows you. Or for an underwater dog show, that is. You might, yeah, you might get funny looks with an underwater housing. The talky bits. Well, another option, of course, is just not to bother. Well, your camera won't get wet if you sit on your backside at home. No, only kidding. We can't let the rain restrict us. We have to find ways to work in rubbish weather. Maybe that's why Terry asked me this question. In England, we're very good at dealing with the rain. We get enough of it. And that's not in a dramatic way, just in a dull, grey, boring, damp, wet way. Terry might be an Oz now, basking in the sunshine, but he's certainly lived in England, where I am now. Maybe he's just missing having problems like this and getting bored with wall-to-wall sunshine. It's a hard life, isn't it? And guess what? As I write this, yes, it's actually raining. And I don't write things and record them at the same time, but that's what I wrote in the script. And now I'm recording it. Surprisingly, it's not raining here. That's very unusual. It's on its way, though. If I'd done it an hour later, it'd be throwing it down. See, there's always more than one way around a problem, and the ones I've told you about here are the ones I've used in the past. Well, most of them anyway. And what I've told you here is a combination of things that will reduce the chance of your camera getting wet and suffering severe damage. And if your camera does get wet, take out the batteries in the memory card and let it dry somewhere naturally. Now, one thing that's just leapt into my head, insurance that covers accidental damage, and specifically water damage, not a bad thing to have, is it? Now, there was another thought I had in my head, but that's um, that sort of escape now. What do I do? Well, I do all of the above. It varies massively. And yes, I have really attached an umbrella to a tripod. I really have done that, and it worked a treat. But I tend not to take photos in the rain. For my architectural construction and real estate photography work, I normally work on sunny days. Obviously, that's a challenge here in England. But people don't want the buildings photographing in the rain. You know, estate agents don't want photos of buildings in the rain. An architect doesn't want his completed showcase project photographing in the rain. So dry days are a must and that's why that's why I don't take many photos in the rain. And I also do lots of travel photography, but that's thankfully in places with much drier, nicer, warmer climates. So again, the rain isn't necessarily a problem. And I wouldn't photograph a tourist resort in the rain either, so... That's <laughs> that, that's another way of not having to worry about getting your camera wet. Don't take photos in the rain. So I might be an expert in rubbish weather, being English and living in England, but thankfully I'm not in taking photos in rubbish weather. All right then, related episodes. Episode 115, which was the last episode, which was about getting a camera covered in soot and steam, which sounds nice, doesn't it? Other than that, nothing else I've done relates to this question. So next episode, Photography Explained Podcast, episode 117. What does manual mode mean and do I have to learn it? Open brackets, yes you do, close brackets. Get your question answered. Get your question answered like Terry did. Or questions. Again, you're not limited to one question here. This is what the podcast is all about, answering your photography questions and not mine. It's so nice not to have to dream up a question in the title myself and answer a question from a listener. So please get in touch with your question and not only will I answer your question but I will give you several shout outs on that episode which has to be nice. Just head over to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Okay I'm done. Well thanks for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. To find out more about my podcast and do stuff to help me 
check out the podcast website, which is photographyexplainedpodcast.com. Apologies for the um, for the bad throat again and the, the voice, which is slightly different from how it normally is. Hopefully next episode, which I'll be recording next week, I'll be fully recovered. But hopefully for now that wasn't too, too bad. And um, I will say thank you for listening. This episode was brought to you by, well, far too much medication in the cold slash COVID slash flu arena. Paracetamol, ibuprofen, tea, Lemsip, omelettes, stuff like that and water. Hi, I'm Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to me and for giving me 10-ish minutes of your valuable time. And I will see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick.